Mike Lindell, he essentially wants to parachute to drop over 14,000 of his pillows to the Canadian truckers in a so-called freedom convoy, what? Uh, yeah, Mike actually tried to deliver the pillows, but he was denied entry into Canada because of his vaccine status. Check this out. He sent a whole truckload of these to uh, about, I don't know, a thousand of these too. Oh, these are Bible pillows for the kids up there. Uh, we got Noah's Ark and stuff, so, <clears throat> um, and then we got the bed pillows. And we had uh, we had just heard that they you know they're going to be there for quite a while, and even if they're, whatever they're trying to do in Ottawa right now, you know it is what it is. We're gonna we're gonna get the pillows to them. Well, uh, Lindell, who was recently banned uh, from Twitter, uh, he also made headlines after Minnesota's Bank and Trust, uh, that's his main bank, essentially cut ties with him. And this is after the pillow man essentially was deemed a reputation risk. Now, uh, according to the National Post, a my pillow truck carrying over 10,000 pillows, including 1,000 Bible pillows, destined for the trucker's children, was also intercepted trying to cross the border through the Ambassador Bridge leading to Windsor. Ontario. According to the senior government source, Lindell was turned back because he was not fully vaccinated and did not have a negative PCR test in hand. Now in a tweet, Christopher Adamo says, Mike Lindell announces that his trucks are headed to the border. Thank you, Mike Lindell for being such a great courageous patriot. Oh wow, that's audacity on Twitter. Well, I don't really know how far his trucks will get or have uh, are essentially going to get in the outcome because Canada, again, requiring people to be fully vaccinated, uh, have that negative COVID test. But per the Daily Beast, apparently Lindell has it covered. Uh, so after his initial Tuesday shipment of MyPillow products were denied entry into Canada, well, Mike Lindell, well, what he did essentially here is he, uh, now having that backup plan of plan to get free pillows to Canadian truckers, drop them from the sky via helicopter. The pillow maven told the Daily Beast late Wednesday night that he intends to drop his pillows into Canada from a helicopter with little parachutes attached. We need to get the my pillows to the people, he continued. I swear, I am so thrown off by this. The concepts and how this man functions as an individual is just so incredibly disturbing. Jank. Uh, yeah, I want to get back to Mike Lindell's psychology in a second because it is it's a case study. Um, but first, let's start with the amusing concept of parachuting pillows into Canada. Um, then they would land on the ground, wouldn't they? And they're pillows. Uh, <laughs> and you could tell how he treats the pillows because in the video we showed you, he's like, oh, I got this Bible pillow, I got this other Bible pillow. And then he throws them on the ground. We're buying those pillows? Well, I'm not, but. <laughs> Right, yeah. like you don't seem to care a lot about cleanliness on those pillows, when that would seem to be a relevant factor. We put our heads on them. Um, okay, <laughs> so does he something about my pillows? Um, and uh, then there was a curious thing, Adrian, where Mike Lindell, uh, Lindell has always said, "Oh, it's, a, it's a fake news." I actually did get into Canada and. Well, wait a minute, if that's true, Canada requires you to not only have a negative test, as you said, but also to be fully vaccinated. So is Mike Lindell fully vaccinated? Because we're not the ones saying he got into Canada, he's the one saying he got into Canada. Did you illegally cross the border or are you fully vaccinated? I hope you are, for your sake, I, you know, I'm a good lib, I, I want to save your life, right? Uh, but it does seem to be a curious inconsistency in his story. Absolutely, and something about this whole pillow helicopter drop, it just, it really conjures the sentiments we just discussed in terms of uh, essentially putting your trash into other countries uh, because nobody wants those pillows. No one even wants Mike Lindell. Like he just really needs to upgrade himself to becoming uh, just a member of society that contributes something other than nonsense because he is just a problem, problem after problem. And he needs to be saving all of his helicopter and his shipment and his pillow money to defend himself in lawsuits because it's just this man is not necessarily all here. Um, and unfortunately, he's all there uh, according to his accounts when it comes to Canada. And I really feel bad for people. So um, if Justin Trudeau wants to send him back, I'll take the trash. 
Yeah, <laughs> so I, you know, I hadn't quite thought of it the way that you said it, Adrian. It, it's true. I mean, once the pillows land, nobody's gonna pick up a free pillow, you know, on the <laughs> ground, right? That doesn't make any sense. So it's what it is is actually a massive littering campaign against the people mm -hmm. of Canada. I mean, let alone if those pillows actually land in the middle of traffic. I mean, think about the mess that it could cause. I mean, it's and borderline dangerous. I know with Lindell, whenever he sees any kind of fight, he thinks, pillow fight, I gotta parachute my pillows in there. But Mike, not everything's a pillow fight. Um, so which the, now I'm heads over to his psychology. Uh, and obviously, we're, we're not his therapist. I think you guys are aware of that. Uh, but I have always been curious, Adrian. I mean, so here's a guy who went bankrupt many times. He had an addiction issue, he says he's past it. Uh, he believes things that no rational person could possibly believe. And then Fox News is part of the deep state, deep state conspiracy and you know every kind of lie you could imagine. He is in Canada, he's not in Canada, he is vaccinated, he's not vaccinated. I mean, none of it makes any sense at all. Yet until this giant debacle, he had a successful pillow company that was apparently very profitable. I don't understand how that could possibly happen. So I, <laughs> I don't get it. I so but honestly, it goes to the larger question and that people might be offended by. Like Michelle Tafoya is an NBC sports reporter. I watched her, yes. you know, for decades. And she seemed to be a sane person. And she comes out and she says, oh, I'm you know, getting into Republican politics. I, I don't understand how people who believe insane things function in the real world. I, I literally don't get it. Mm -hmm. I don't know that you have an answer or anybody has an answer, but it's a giant mystery to me. Absolutely, and it was interesting because Michelle Trafoya is exceptional at what she does in terms of being a sideline reporter. And a lot of um, her work is just really top tier and people use it to instruct um, other future sideline reporters and how to do the job. And so to see her essentially decide to walk away, which is totally fine. But then to figure out, hey, yo, when you weren't doing your job, you were just crazy. Like that's just, that's just, it's disappointing because it, you know, it makes any admiration I may have had for her, it just, it completely dissipates. And the thing is, it makes me also think about how those players probably knew who she was. And the people who work with her knew who she was. And to have to be around someone like that who has that mentality, it just, wow, it, it's, it's unfortunate. Cuz I would have thought she would have been clearing the checks doing that sideline reporting for so many years that she wouldn't need to sell out like this. But maybe she's just showcasing her true colors and you know she can do her uh, just at a distance from me. <laughs> at a distance from me. Yeah, no, I don't think she's selling out. I think that she genuinely believes it. And and that's why I, I find it more surprising. So I remember one of our reporters was interviewing Trump supporters in the middle of the 2020 election, and you know some of them clearly didn't have a high education. But I don't mean that as an insult because a lot of them did, like guys who look like accountants and dentists and and, and like normal suburban couples. And then you'd ask them about the election, they're like, oh. Well, you know, it's, it could be stolen by the Venezuelans, and if it is, as we suspect, uh, we'll then move to Panama. And I'm like, like, oh. and then after the election, they literally came out and said Hugo Chavez stole it. He, he's been dead for seven years. Like, I don't understand. And and I'll tell you, it's affected uh, people I know too, Adrian. You know, my uncle watched Fox News Channel, and then voted for Trump. He voted for Trump in 2016 after Trump said we should ban Muslims from the country. He's a Muslim, my uncle's a Muslim immigrant. It's amazing and he's a doctor, successful, smart. How they warp the minds of otherwise intelligent people is a phenomenon that is just one of the most amazing things I have ever seen in my life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I have an older brother uh, who has been incarcerated for cannabis. Um, it was really stupid, but uh, yeah, and he is black. 
And he is same thing, the indoctrination, and he is full Trump, full conspiracy theory, the whole thing. He also is wheelchair bound, so he actually isn't very mobile. And so he just sit in front of the TV all day. And like our family, it's like we don't even know who he is anymore. And trying to draw him back and to get him to understand logic and the fact that all of these things are not true. It's just, it's like we've lost like a subset of our society, unfortunately, and a lot of our loved ones. Too. And it just really, it's really unfortunate. No, I won't keep going on this. That that's right, Adrian. And uh, and we have to make sure that we stay in touch with them, and we have to, that we keep talking to them because they, they've, I think they've literally been brainwashed. Um, <laughs> another uncle of mine, he's not uh, uncle by blood, but a, he's such a wonderful person to our family. Uh, he's the one that helped my dad immeasurably when my dad first moved to America. He's part of the reason why we love America, right? And watched Fox News and has now turned against immigrants. Oh my God, oh my God, a guy who loved JFK and was so wonderfully decent to a new Muslim immigrant that came to this country, voted for Trump and now hates immigrants. These people are being brainwashed at a mass level like nothing I've ever seen. And and so I haven't seen it before in my lifetime, but obviously it exists. Goebbels did it um, in Germany. You know, uh, they just did it on the radio in uh, when the Hutus killed the Tutsis in Rwanda, right? Uh, so, I think my main takeaway, Adrian, is that brainwashing is real. It is incredibly mm -hmm. easy, uh, and and if the media does it, it, it gets done on a on a mass scale that is super dangerous. Absolutely, and I wouldn't be surprised because at um, you know major media outlets, they oftentimes will train you and they have you work with a coach uh, for on-air performance, how to communicate, how to articulate, how to formulate uh, your words and whatnot. And I wouldn't be surprised if uh, over at Fox News that they have someone who is educated in how to essentially, um, you know, Plant propaganda and how to get people's minds looped in and to think that something is entirely logical and it makes sense when it's really kind of just um, a warping of the facts. Because uh, they're just, they're so good at it uh, and it's very disturbing. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video, thank you.